we're going to talk about the test generator part right now. So there's multiple ways you can create a test. Let's create a test and see what those choices are. The three choices are down here. They're called build options. I can create a test randomly. In this way, all I'm choosing is how many questions I want and of what type. So five multiple choice, two short answer, let's say. But I'm surrendering control as to what questions are chosen. The second type, is choosing questions by difficulty level, let's say DOK level or Bloom's Taxonomy, or even state standards. The third level is to start from scratch and picking and choosing the exact questions we want to be a part of the test. And so in the third way we have the most control. Let's start with the first way first, building a test randomly. I'm going to call this random test. First thing it wants you to do is ask for a title is to submit a title. Then it's asking for where do you want this test to locate, be located? Where do you want it to exist? I want it to exist in my test. And like I said just a moment ago, I want to choose randomly. So we're ready to proceed. I click next. Where are we getting these questions from? What test questions do we want to use? Well, I have a couple banks here. I teach a section of geography, so you'll see my geography section there, but we're talking about science. So I'm going to open up my bank of science questions, and I want those questions to come from chapter 3, from a cell to an organism. I'm ready for next. Now what languages do I want to be available? I'm going to choose both English and Spanish. Click Next. Now here's where we're choosing how many questions we want and of what type. So I'm going to choose, let's say, 10 multiple choice. And I want also, uh, let's say, five subjective short answer, uh, short answer. Click Next. Gives you a breakdown of how many questions you chose and of what type. And when I click Finish, I will have a test that supports those that chapter that I chose. And if I scroll down here, you could see those questions. You'll see images embedded within our test banks that have already been created for you. And once a test is created, of course, I can print it or even make multiple versions of that test. Scrambled by section, uh, true, false, multiple choice in different places. I could even scramble the multiple choice answers within a multiple choice question if I wanted to do that. Now that is the quickest and easiest way to create a test. How did we do it? We let the computer decide which questions were chose, chosen and what type. All we chose were what type. Let's do it the second way which uh, is choosing by state standards or difficulty level. Again, we have to create a title. I'm going to call this a uh, leveled test. Again, I want it to be housed in my tests. And I'm going to choose the second option. When I click Next, again, it's going to ask me where do you want these test questions to come from. Uh, again, I wanted to come from my science course, and instead of Chapter 3, I'm going to choose Chapter 4 this time. Click Next. Again, I want it to be in English and in Spanish when I click Next. Now I choose what criterion I want to uh, choose these questions from. So let's choose Difficulty Level. And here we have different levels of Bloom's Taxonomy and Depth of Knowledge Levels. So I'm going to choose, oh, let's say one question from DOK Level 3, and how about 10 questions from DOK Level 2. I'm going to update that, and when I click Next, it gives me a breakdown of what I chose and of what type, and when I click Finish, I have a test that has been created by Depth of Knowledge Difficulty Level. So that is a second way to create the test. Remember where we house the test. We house it in our My Test Test Bank. So when I go to My Tests, what do I have? I have that random test that we created, and then I have that level test that we created as well. So far we've created two tests in two different ways, and both exist in a folder that is called My Tests. When I open up My Tests, we can see those two tests. One is our random test. Here we chose how many questions and of what type. We didn't have any control over the specific questions. 
Here we chose the difficulty level. We could have chose standards, we could have chose some other criteria, but we chose difficulty level. And if I open up these tests, they can be printed out at any time, or even modified if you'd like. We're going to create a test now a third way. So let's click Create New Test. The third option that we have is Build an Empty Test. So if I click on Build an Empty Test, again, I have to call it a uh, give it a title. So I'm going to call this um, My Question Choices Test. Again, I want it to exist in the My Test folder. And we're ready to move forward. When I click Finish, it's immediately taken us back to this screen. There really isn't anything else for us to do other than choose which questions we want to be a part of the test. Now this is a very important part when you create an empty test or a test of your choosing. You have to X out of this screen. And it's somewhat counterintuitive, but I'd like for you to X out of this screen. Now, does that test still exist? Of course it does. Where does it exist? Well, it probably exists in the My Test folder. And if I open up that folder, there it is. It's still available to us. My question choices tests. The only thing is it's empty so far. It doesn't have any questions in it. So what we have to do is choose the questions we want to be a part of this test. Again, I'm going to go to my science folder here. Choose the chapter that I want to be on this test. So let's say it's the periodic table. I'll have some lessons that will show up in that chapter. So how about uh, lesson one? I bring it over here to my working screen on the right. When I bring that lesson over, that part of the page will populate with the questions that we have from that lesson. If I click on this Go To button, notice that we have a bunch to choose from. So that specific lesson doesn't just have the first 10 that appear. It has others that I can choose from. Now I have those questions in front of me. The next thing I have to do is move them to the empty folder that we have called My Question Choices Test. So what's an intuitive way of doing that? Well, I think these days we probably think of dragging and dropping that question. And that is the correct answer. So I can take this question, I can drag it over to my test that's empty, and drop that question into that folder. Now notice I have a question in here now. I like that question. You know what? I don't like number 33 or 34, but I do like number 35. And how do we know it is perfectly placed within the test? Well, you'll see some dotted lines appear over the test name after my cursors uh, is, is hovering over it. And that tells me that I'm in the proper place to drop that test question into that test folder. Now I have two questions. I'm going to move a little bit down into the lesson and choose another question from questions 41 through 50. How about this question? I'll bring that one over. Now I have a three question test that has the questions of my choosing in it. If I X out of this, again that test will still exist. It will always exist until you delete it. And at any time I can pull that test question up or that test up bring it over here to my right and decide whether or not I want to modify it or I want to print it whether that be one version or multiple versions for the different classrooms in my day.